Welcome to Blissful Dresses. My name is Sam. Can I help you find a dress today? Perfect. Let me take a couple of details. Of course, your name to start with would be brilliant. Okay. And what's the occasion you're dressing for today, sweetheart? Wedding guest. Perfect. I can definitely help you there. I've got some lovely spring colours in, as you can see. And do you know your UK dress size? Just so we have something to start with. Okay. No problem. And what's your usual style? How would you describe it? So for example, my style is whimsical. Okay, so you describe your style as feminine. And are you looking for a particular colour scheme, sweetheart? Okay. Understood. I want to keep it pastel. I think pastels are usually the safest option. Is the wedding kind of a late spring, May time? The perfect time for a wedding, wouldn't you say? Perfect. And finally, do I have consent to measure you? Okay. Perfect. Well, I would like to just take my measure here get some of your basic measurements. I know this is only a 15 minute appointment, but it would just really help if we could order you a dress and have all the little details ironed out in advance, don't you think? Okay, great. Well, let's get started on the measurements. If you could just take a step back for me. Okay. Very good. Let me take my tape measure here and we'll start off by doing your waist, this area. So just stay very still for me honey. Very still, there we go. Perfect. That's the waist measurement. And now we're going to go to hips. So that's a little bit lower. Are you comfortable with that? Excellent. Just meet round the back here. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Some people find this process quite nice and relaxing. Some don't. Okay, let's do the neck now. Trust me, it's very helpful when we have something with quite a high neck. And I notice you do have a bust size as well. That These things interfere with each other, trust me. When you have a high necked item and a large bust size, they often don't go hand in hand. Trust me. Okay, a lovely shaped neck there. And then we're going to do the bust. It's important we do this so that the dress zips up nicely, is comfortable to wear. And at a wedding you want to be able to eat a meal and have a drink and feel comfortable. That's all we can ask of a dress, isn't it? Or indeed a suit. Lovely. That is perfect for size. In my opinion. Okay, sweetheart, I'm going to do the length of your back. So from the bottom of your neck right down to the hips. So just stay still. You might feel something cold at the back of your neck. Just gonna move the tape measure down to the bottom of the spine. Perfect. A lovely and long back. 
would you ever consider a backless dress perhaps? It's not for everybody. I find you need to have really nice posture to have a backless dress. I struggle with posture. So now can you hold your arms out for me like this so I can measure the length of each arm? Thank you. We'll start with this one. Lovely long arms. I'll move straight over to this one and just see if they're the same. It's very common for them not to be quite the same, would you believe? Very good. Let me just take note of that. And as we've just done arms, I imagine you can see where this is going. I'm going to do legs. If you could just hitch this leg out for me, I'm just going to let my tape measure drop to the floor and read that measurement there. Okay. Lovely. And this side, I'm just going to hitch the top of the thigh. And let that drop. Yep, the same. Lovely and level. Right. I think that's all the measurements we need. Is there any more you feel you'd like? Mm -hmm. You'd like the circumference of your arms here? That's no problem at all. I completely understand where you come from. When you have a dress with sleeves, perhaps, and it's too tight, I really feel that. Lovely. And I'll do this one. Okay. Lovely. That's all sorted. Those were the same. Okay. Now it's going to be time to take you through a couple of dresses that we've got in store. Does that suit you? Okay, let's start with this beautiful pink number. Obviously this fits the brief of having pastels. Yes. You can see it has a bit of a light V-shaped neckline with a frill cut sleeve. It's a beautiful shade of baby pink, very delicate material. It's crepe-like, it's quite sheer, it's quite pure. You can see it has a frill detail down the front here. And on the back it goes into a low V. Now something about this dress to note is it wouldn't be great for somebody that feels they need to wear a bra and that's because the back is a little bit low, it will show and it will probably pop out at the front a little bit and the straps would not be covered by this sheer sleeve here. It's a beautiful long piece. It definitely will trail on the floor. It's one for heels. You can see it's got several tiers of frill. It's very beautiful, very summery. Is it of any interest to you? Okay, no problem. Let's try another option. How about something that's also very nice and pastel-like? I have this dress here. Sorry, this is the sample that somebody's tried on. Let me clear up that sleeve for you. So yes, it's a nice, gorgeous lilac, yellow flowers. It's got frills and lace, so it's quite detailed. You can see here, it's got a sweetheart neckline. Now 
you won't need to undo these buttons very often because the dress slips on at the back here. It's got a zip at the side. As you can see, the back is also very, very open. It's lovely, but again, it's a piece to wear probably without a bra, so you've got to be quite comfortable with that. Optionally, obviously, if you don't care, wear one. <laughs> has a tie at the top here so you've got to be fairly confident in that. The puff sleeve is very cute, very whimsical and very my style would you believe. It's a maxi, it's got several layers of lacy frill, frilly lace and overall it's very lovely, it's very princess, what do you think? possibility. It'd be a very cute wedding piece. Okay, let's try something slightly bolder, shall we? This is one of my favourite pieces and I make this very often in the festive times of year. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? It's a corseted scarlet red dress with frill layered sleeves, like so. And a bust line here with a frill. As well as a nice little corset that's got some wiring to keep secure. A ruched bust, which is a very cute little detail. And then it cinches in at the waist here and out it comes in several frilly layers. The underskirt is also quite weighty. It's good for a nice effect, flowy effect. So if you're somebody that likes a dance, this would look beautiful. Now the back has several hook and eyes right here. And it does have a slightly open back. So again, you might not be comfortable with open backs, but there it is. So the skirt of this piece is really what makes it stand out. What do you think? It's really nice. It does cinch the waist quite well, better than the other dresses we've looked at, and gives quite the illusion but then again, you don't want to feel uncomfortable or too tight. And I know you wanted more of a pastel. I just wanted to show you something because it is my most popular by far. So anyway, let's get on to our final dress. This is my favorite dress to make for clients. I find it does a really good job at fitting a brief it's pastel, it's soft, it has a gorgeous ruched bust, it's got a slightly flared skirt, but it's very forgiving. A gorgeous spring meadow green. You can tie the bust to make it slightly tighter if you so wish. And the back is not open, so if you've not been impressed with the open backs, this is a closed back for you. What do you think? It's about mid-length and it does have a little hitch in the skirt here. So it's something that would look nice with heels, with flats, a couple of options. It's really nice because I think this is good for a wedding guest outfit for sure, but also special days out. Obviously, it not being maxi length feels like it can be multi-occasion. I've worn this many times and it always suits me very well. A spring palette is my palette, so I think it brings out my features. So yes, which dress is appealing to you? Mm -hmm. Ah, really? You're most interested in this one. I'm so glad to hear it. 
What about this dress appeals to you? Is it the nice ruched bodice? I love it. Okay. Let me get this made up for you, strictly to your measurements. I hope you've had fun today at the dress shop. Was it relaxing for you? Good. Thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da. Do you mind if I just put my hands on it and add a little feel? Yeah. It's got a bit of texture, a bit of dryness maybe, and the ends look that little bit fizzle, you see there. So why don't I just start off? with a comb through, we can identify any areas that might need thinning out. Mm -hmm. I've got a nice wide tooth comb here. A wide tooth comb. It's very, very good. Better getting out those knots. Stay still for me, honey. Oh, wow. It's quite long though. You've done a good job at growing the length. Bleaching is definitely really difficult to move away from. I do completely understand why you might be reluctant to stop, but the reality is with bleached hair comes more damage, thinner hair strands, breakage. Is it usually quite dark and deep and you've bleached it to this Caramel shade. Well, well done you, because it's a beautiful shade, very chocolatey and sweet. But yeah, I think you could do with a little bit of TLC, some K18, maybe just some standard hair oils. Mm -hmm. So if you were allowed to colour this however you wanted. What colour would you be choosing? Platinum. No, surely not. There's really no need to go so light. It's just not. Something that suits you in your colour season. You're much more of a warm tone, autumn colour. Very good. So it's maintained a lot of the length. But I think about this much. It needs to come off. How do you feel about that? A little bit scared. I do understand. But just trust me, okay? So let's do another comb through. This time I will spritz you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Da, 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 da. 
some dry patches. rubbed in this side I think this one will be more suited. So let's start with this side. So I'm just going to hold the top so I don't pull your hair. I know this is quite naughty and I really don't want to hold and pull too tight. less damaged at this side. I'm wondering if you are right or left handed. Believe me, sometimes I can tell. I'm just going to go out with you for a moment so I get this side here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just about ready for a cut. Let me just spritz a little bit more. Good. Just get that spritz. Mm -hmm. 
sweetheart. Make sure that matches up both sides. Give that a bit more shape. So if you see her coming away, it's nothing to be nervous about. Just get these ends cut. I love a nice blunt. having a fringe. I just think you'd really suit one. I was looking at your face and because you've got quite a lot of hair at the front, I think it would look really, really nice. Why don't we have a little consult about it and see? I notice you don't have any layers as well, which I think is really good. It just makes it so much easier and more pleasant to cut. Okay, we're nearly done at this side. It's looking really smart around the back. Just get a little bit. Get that nice blunt. Lovely, okay. Now let me come around the front then and take a look at this little fringe idea. So this is kind of where your front pieces are at right now. So you can see you need a little bit of maintenance. But I think a full fringe would look really good. Trust me, let me comb it out and just show you the impact. What do you think? You willing to give it a try? looking really nice. Don't worry, we've got to neaten it up. A couple of long stragglers. <laughs> How do you feel? I think it looks really cute and sophisticated. I absolutely love it. Okay, now let me just sweep that out of your way. And let's oil you up, okay? You need some hair oil desperately. So let me get that. Coconut oil concoction that works absolute wonders. So I'll warm it up in my hands a little bit. I don't want to shock you or get it warms up really fast. So let me just grab the ends of your hair this side. Oh, lovely. You look so pretty right now. I hope you feel like you look a little bit cleaner, more put together. It didn't take much and your natural colour is coming through. It's going to look so good. So glossy and so rich. 
I hope you had fun and maybe next time we can have a slightly longer appointment. <laughs> Blissful Cafe. How are you? Oh. It is a cold spring morning, isn't it? It's time to come in and get yourself all warmed up. Have you come in for a hot drink? I don't blame you at all. We do the best coffees in town. Far better than those down the road. I've got my sign up here, the coffee corner. I treat myself. And yes, this is my screen cafe full of life. Would you like to take a look at the menu with me? Or do you want some peace and quiet to be left to your own devices? Yeah, of course. I will show you this. It's more for like the food and refreshing drinks really. We are famous for our coffees. You can build your own coffee order yourself. I've got a little menu there but I'll take you through this first. So here we are. You're at Blissful Breaks. This is the menu. Hand drawn by myself of course. So starting off with some basic hot drinks. We have Yorkshire tea, perfection. Earl Grey, also very good. An Americano, so that's a shot of coffee with hot water and there's room for milk. Room for milk, yes. We don't do cream here in England, I'm sorry. A creamer for coffee is typically more American, but you will find a lovely selection of milks and syrups that might give it a similar effect. And we've got an oat latte and a hazelnut hot chocolate. Of course we have more coffee options, syrups and milks. We'll get to that. But do you need a cup of tea in you or are you waiting for a coffee? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm in the mood where I just need a cup of tea and nothing else will do. So I'm just checking. You're not in that mood, honey got some cold drinks, some infused water, so that means I can get you some lemon water, strawberry water, anything like that, just for a refreshing little kick. And then we've got Diet Coke, my favourite, peach iced tea, very nice on hot days. It's a bit chilly today so it might not hit the same, but up to you. I've got a green smoothie and I'm actually begging you not to order any I hate cleaning the blender. It's such hard work. But don't tell anyone that I asked you not to order that. <laughs> and then we've got cocktails. We do have a license here, yeah, but barely anyone orders a cocktail. Yeah, I don't blame them. We've got a Pim's Spritz. Surely you must know what Pim's is. Oh, it is lovely. Even I have to admit that. A Sex on the Beach. Or a tequila sunrise. The type of drinks that you get on tap when you're on an all-inclusive holiday to spin. <laughs> oh yes. And then let's move on to food. Are you hungry or no? Well, do you think maybe you like the aesthetic of the place and you might come back at some point soon? Because if so, it might still be worth taking you through the food menu. So we've got an afternoon tea, a selection of finger sandwiches, desserts and cream scones for £9.95. You must know about afternoon tea. It's everywhere when you search 
London travel or UK travel, I love afternoon tea. It is a nice fun treat. Mm -hmm. We've got cream tea, which is a mini version, if you didn't know. A cream tea is just the top shelf of an afternoon tea. So that's the scone, the clotted cream and the jam and a cup of tea or coffee but tea. I worked for years in an afternoon tea cafe where that's all we sold and it was tiring. And then we've got fish and chips. Ah, it's lovely. All the batter served with thick pub style chips. Are you a chip fan? We very much are a nation of chip lovers, so hopefully you are a chip fan. A full English breakfast. Now, English food is questionable at times in terms of cuisine. Some say you should have breakfast for breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> Some think it's the only good thing that we make. I disagree. But a full English breakfast, you've got scramble, rashers, sausages, baked beans, which I adore. Tomatoes, mushrooms and granary toast. I prefer white toast, but my manager insists on having granary. Then we've got a vegan sausage sandwich, anyone that would love one, I personally would love one and it's got this gorgeous fresh focaccia which is just so oily and salty and it's got a lovely rosemary taste to it. I really would recommend that for like a lunch. And then we've got avocado toast which is nice and simple, that's only 5 99 Freshly baked granary toast with smashed avocado lemon juice and chilli flakes. I love it when there's a little bit of a lemon squeeze on my avocado toast. I think it's really nice. Mm. Alright, so does anything appeal to you to date? No? You don't want any food for sure. But maybe a snack or a cake. I completely get it. Let me just have a sip of tea. So, if you are determined to have a coffee which I really would recommend. Let me just take your coffee order. And because we've got so many coffee orders on at once, the baristas find it the easiest if I just get my little whiteboard here and write down all the options and just take the boxes, okay? Ooh. So to start off, we've obviously got coffee. So do you want one shot of coffee? two shots or a decaf shot. Yeah, so it's a really nice blend. It's a little bit citrusy this week. They change the beans every single week, so I don't always know what I'm going to get. But it's always really, really nice. So you want two shots. Two shots of coffee. You're certain you want two shots. Okay. So, for milk options, you've got oat milk. My recommend almond, soy, or rice milk. Oat milk does the best with the steam ones um, and it tastes so good and so sweet and creamy. Almond's also nice but obviously it does have that nutty touch. Soy is nice for those that like to taste the coffee and nothing else and rice is really good for those who have a really strange sense of milk and what is nice and what isn't. So take your pick. Oat milk. Good, you're gonna trust me on that. And next we've got syrups. Oh, I love syrup. I love syrup in my coffee. We've got hazelnut, caramel, or vanilla. I know we used to have hundreds of syrups, but it got out of hand. Orders were wrong, so we decided to simplify and have these three. And I'll actually show you exactly what they look like. We've got these gorgeous. Little syrup bottles here. So that's vanilla. It's not very popular as you can see, it's very full. And then we've got hazelnut. They're just so classy, aren't they? They pour so nicely. And then we've got the 
final one. We've got Caramel. By far the most popular. Everyone loves Caramel, don't they? So which of those do you think would appeal most to you? Hazelnut, Caramel or Vanilla? You think Hazelnut? Excellent choice. Then finally we've got if you'd like any extras. So any whipped cream, marshmallows, they are traditionally hot chocolates but people like it. Chalky sprinkles. Mm -hmm. None. And None. Okay. So can I take a name for the order? Is that with an F? Sign that with a little heart on the end. I'll go hand that into the baristas and you can just wait two seconds while they make that for you. So before we make your coffee, can you just choose a mug for me please? Yeah. We've got this lovely green stripes or this pink stripes. Do either of those appeal to you? Great, okay, perfect. So you've got your mug first thing we're going to do is get the shot ready. We need to hand grind all of the beans for the coffee. It makes the most fine, smooth run of espresso. So we'll just grind that a little bit. Use some of our tricks of the tray to make that extra fine. We'll put our coffee head in and let the espresso run out into your cup for you. Very good. And then it's time to consider warming up the milk. Now I know you chose oat milk, so this is the oat milk we're going to use. And we're going to put this in the jug here. And put it under the steam wand. Give it a good old swirl while your coffee shop waits for us. Now once the milk is nearly there, we want to tap the milk jug, get any bubbles out, but before we pour, we need to put the syrup in. So you want a caramel? No, it was hazelnut, that was the one. Okay, just a quick shot of hazelnut syrup for you. And now time to pour the milk. So we're going to do a gentle pour. Gentle pour, gentle pour into the mug and get it nice and full. And there is a lovely, tasty coffee just for you. There's your hot, steaming coffee for you. Shall I just pop that there for you? No worries. Did you enjoy watching the process? Yeah, we've had to really reinvent ourselves lately because of the coffee fame we've been getting online. So popular here at Blissful Breaks. Oh, I know, I think people love that we use only plant milks as well because it makes such tasty good coffee. Oh, and I was thinking about a little snack that I could give you. Now, this morning I was in the bakery and I spent a few hours making desserts, little vanilla slices, caramel slices, etc. So me and the bakers came up with this amazing Rocky Road marshmallow slice. It's got little crunchy bits in it, gorgeous little pink marshmallows. Yes, they're dairy free as well, would you believe? They are just the perfect size to have with coffee. They pair so nicely, trust me. And I thought you might like to enjoy one with your coffee. Yeah, feel free to say no. You'll try one? Thank you so much. I hope you like it. What's your favourite dessert? Do you like the classic? British desserts like sticky toffee pudding or is it what is it bread pudding or something like that spotted dick that kind of thing I think I like the trifles so they're like custard cream and fruit 
I don't know, but sometimes they're a bit old fashioned. We try and keep things a bit more modern here and think outside the box. I've been thinking about making some donuts for the cafe. I think they just sell so nicely in my little ASMR cafe. What do you think? How's your coffee? Is it nice? Mm hmm. Did you used to be a priest yourself? Do you ever miss it? I don't blame you. It's hard work being on your feet all day, but there are some benefits to working in a cafe. I like the free food, for sure. I like talking to nice people and having regulars that are just happy to be here and sit in our space. I like learning how to manage a space and just being in a lovely place with kind people is a privilege of every day. Mm -hmm. When I used to work in an office, I just really hated being there. So yes, you might earn a little bit better money, but every day just feels like a task. Whereas I feel so happy to be here in this lovely cafe. It's like a dream, honestly. So anyway, thank you so much for coming in and ordering a coffee. I will leave you to enjoy your Rocky Road Slice and your coffee without me badgering you. I hope you come back for another visit soon. <coughs> studio. Can I help you? Mm -hmm. Of course. You're looking for a quick portrait. Quick. Emphasis on speed. I've only got 15 minutes with you. Not to worry, that's fine. Quickly though, I do like to use a selection of colours that represent auras and feelings. Can I help you choose some? Very, very quickly. I have some right here. And I'd love you to just choose some that you feel represent you. So starting here, we've got a lovely pastel yellow, pale lemon. Pale lemon, isn't it nice? What do you think of pale lemon? Okay, and what about this one? Opera Rose. Opera Rose. It's like a really nice medium pink. I think it's gorgeous. Definitely not. Okay, it's a shame. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Next, we've got another pastel in pale violet, which I would call lavender personally. What do you think? You like this? Yes, there are a few more pastels. Okay, but what about another deep and rich tone in deep turquoise? What would you say to this? You like it? Yeah, it mixes really nicely with lots of colours actually. Turquoise is always my favourite. It reminds me of the deep ocean. Okay. What about this? Winds of Violet. Obviously it's very deep, very rich. Winds of Violet, do you like it? Good, we've got a winner there then. Good to know. And finally we've got Powder Blue, which is a beautiful pastel, kind of like a newborn type colour. You like it? Okay, good. I'm so glad to hear it. Let's get those colours mixed up 
And then think about a little pencil outline. What would you say to that? So let's get this palette nice and full. We're going to need lots of paint for nice, thick, luscious layers. I typically like to pile on the product in my paintings. Let's do the yellow first. I love this shade. This is definitely my favourite type of yellow that you can get. It's like a final sunrise. Oh, then the deep turquoise. I suspect these two will actually blend together to make something really quite lovely. Like a gentle teal, maybe? What do you think? Ah, the baby blue. Let's get a nice big splodge of that on there. That's essential, isn't it? And then finally, we want our nice and deep rich violet. Let's get that on there. That's essential for showing your character. So overall, what do you think? Beautiful selection, no? Using this newly sharp 2H, I'm just going to sketch the outlines of your face here. Is it okay if I just lightly trace over your face? Just so I can get the outline and shape correct. Okay. Good. The shape of your chin is really important for me to get right. Good. And the cheekbone here kind of starts about there. Lovely. Okay, let me just... Open some of my camera. to show the light and dark spacing. I'm just trying to get the shape correct. Have you had a portrait done before? Hmm. And what's made you want one today? The eyes. You want something quite original? That's fair enough. You've come to the right place. Just get the shape of those little eyes. Good. And now the lips. <sighs> Very good. Mm -hmm. And you've got kind of a nice. I think we could do with a longer session though, just for future reference. I think we could do a lot with your face. I'm gonna start with this little detail brush. I've got my palette all ready with your choices. I think I'm gonna go all in with this beautiful little powder yellow. I have an inkling it will mix beautifully with the turquoise too. Let me show you. What do you think? Isn't that gorgeous? This will come in handy to show the delicate blush of your cheeks, etc. And just look how beautifully the turquoise mixes with the pale violet as well. It makes such a glorious little shade. I think he's going to be perfect for shaping your nose. And I can use the deeper turquoise to show shadows, such as slightly under the eyes and nostrils, and maybe even to shape the lips. So at the moment I'm just applying colour very spiritedly. I'm going to see how this violet looks on canvas. I 
stunning. I think it would be perfect to show the lines, the lines on the lips, the slight shadow. Your bottom lip is nice and full actually. Lovely. And I think this violet would look really nice as the dot, dot of your pupil. got lashes in the corner here and they're really long. I think I'll blend before I put the detail of them in them. I have a beautiful blender right here. Oh it's the most perfect brush an artist could have. It melts and blends colours so beautifully and seamlessly. I'm just gonna go all in. I can be really fearless with this blender. Just gonna blend out some of the deeper violet at the top of your cheekbones. And I think it would form a lovely shadow around your forehead just to show how it shadows under the hair. Just trust my judgement. I think the deep and rich tones of the turquoise compared to the violet make this very unique. Oh, you've given me so much inspiration to be honest. select a different brush. I also have this fan brush. It's usually good for details such as the lashes, the eyebrows. So I'm going to take this deep violet and I'm going to quickly shape your brows, okay? Just using the very edge of the bristles gives me that control over the area. It's looking very realistic. And your lashes, what do we think about perhaps a turquoise to make them really stand out against the brows. I think that would look really good. Your lashes are incredibly long. Hmm, I didn't notice that before. You really are a pleasure to paint, you know. And your lower lashes. I'm going to take more of this turquoise and fill in the lips a 
Again, making sure there are natural lines where we would expect them in lips. Lips often have cracks and crevices. It's just as expected. So I'm just going to make sure a slightly paler shade of turquoise with a bit of a yellow mix. Sea foam, I'd call this. Sheer sand. I think one last shadow down the nose and we're all done. Thank you so much for coming in today to have your portrait on. I hope you enjoyed yourself and maybe in the future we can spend a little longer together. Goodbye.